complete operations. Enterprise is clear for departure. Admiral on the bridge. Pre-stage flux chiller starboard. On. Main stage flux chiller support. Enabled. Running lights Main on. Main stage flux chiller starboard. Enabled. Intercooler status. Stand by. Space Very well, Mr. Savage. You may Enabled. clear all moorings. Aye, sir. Check. Air equalization automatic on. Check. All moorings are clear, Captain. Thank you. Check. Lieutenant. Have you ever piloted a starship out of space, Doc? Never, sir. Take her out, Mr. Savick. Aye, sir. Everything there is a first time, Lieutenant. Don't you agree, Admiral? Mm -hmm. Aft thrusters, Mr. Sulu. Aft thrusters. Would you like to tranquilize? Head one quarter impulse power. Head one quarter impulse power. Freeze it. Right there. Those metal panels look a lot like what I've seen for many years on aircraft ships and submarines, and it reflects our vision of future large-scale construction off-world. My name is John Blinko. I am president of Gateway Spaceport and CEO of Off-World Industries Corporation. Let's have a closer look at the Starship Enterprise. The creators of this show envisioned a hole made up of thousands of metal panels welded together. That is how big ships, submarines, and aircraft have been built for decades. Sargon Systems will build large enclosed volumes for big modules and rotating space stations in the same manner, but using a fully automated construction system. But 500 years in the future? Who knows? Maybe we would use human-centric construction methods that could build big ships down here on Earth and then somehow lift them into space. But just for the record, I believe big spaceships and stations will be built in space in an automated fashion using machines like Sargon systems, and the materials will eventually be sourced off-world. The construction ring is able to build big structures in space very fast by forming rings of panels and welding them together. This method is not completely new. In Sweden, the Saab Corporation's submarine division is building advanced submarines using an automated welding method that is very similar to ours. Here we see flat panels of steel bent and welded together to form these rings. The steel rings are then welded together in a semi-automated rig to form the pressure hole in sections. Then, pre-assembled interior platforms of the sub, like the engine room or the command center, are then inserted into the hole sections. This is very much like how Vera Station's interior components would be built on Earth and installed into the station's hull before completion on orbit. The Airbus 320 production facility in Hamburg, Germany, 
Automated aircraft production has reached an extraordinary level of autonomous assembly. Large-scale material movement with robotic welding, drilling, and precision laser measurement allow for previously unattainable levels of productivity. Much of what you see here can be used off-world to build communities of stations on orbit quickly. But one of the most exciting uses of automated welding systems to build entire vehicles is what they are doing at SpaceX. Here they create entire rocket holes with a collection of stainless steel rings which you can see here welded together to form the rocket's body. KUKA robot welders in a welding rig can quickly assemble the body by welding the seams. They are also using a new laser beam welder that creates a very small weld pool as it joins the rings together. Perhaps the most important feature of this new system is the speed and accuracy with which it can build rocket bodies. SpaceX wants to build a lot of rockets fast. I think they found their way. So, do you want to visit space? Do you want to live and work off world? Right now, if you want to be a NASA astronaut, your chances of being selected are not good. Not at all. But if you still want to go, then you should invest in space companies with large-scale aspirations because they are your best chance of going into space in your lifetime. Well, Mr. Scott, are your engines capable of handling a minor training cruise? Give the word, Admiral. Mr. Scott, the word is given. Nice right, stuff. Good Admiral. How about the rest of the inspection? We are not going to be building Galaxy-class starships anytime soon, but space docks are coming, and we intend to build big ships and big stations there. When I was a boy, working at a space dock was the job that I wanted. I wanted to build big spaceships like Discovery or Rasanate. All right, here comes the juice. Later, when I became an airline pilot, my dream was to become a shuttle captain, taking people to rotating space stations and hotels in orbit. But back when I was dreaming of that job at the space dock, there was no career pathway to go from where I was then to that job. That pathway is forming now. Today, if you want to work in space, your chances have gotten a lot better. Because in the coming years, there are going to be thousands of jobs available off-world. Why? Because right now, a space construction industry is in development. Not a small space construction industry building small stations, but a big one. So big that some of you who are watching the show will work there. We are confident this is going to happen because Starship has cleared the tower. The development of off-world tools and space construction machines designed to build very large structures and stations are the key to having thousands of jobs available in the decades to come. No, we're not going to have Galaxy-class starships in the next 20 years. What we will have are space construction jobs building large stations like Vera and then the Gateway Spaceport, building large fuel depots, huge space telescopes, and massive off-world communication arrays will be our future. And when those big structures are built, we're going to need people to operate them. That could be you. This is the International Space Station. The people who work here are some of the smartest, finest people this nation has ever produced. And the agency which supports it, NASA, takes its work very seriously every day. Because the work here could save lives on Earth, and not just a few, not just millions, but even billions of people. That's why this laboratory in space, which is very expensive, is so incredibly important. Out of all the things that NASA does, this is one of the areas where America gets its most value. It costs billions of dollars, but what they do here is nothing short of amazing. I hope, like me, you appreciate the contributions that our astronauts and our scientists are making every day at NASA's International Space Station. This is the International Space Station. It holds about six people. These are the craft that service the ISS. They are designed to hold about four to six people. They are perfectly sized for the station. That's why NASA ordered them built. NASA designed the station to perform science experiments. They also paid billions of dollars for these small craft to service it. 
These space taxis are made for NASA's small space station and other small stations like ISS. They are not made for us, the general public. We need something bigger. When Boeing built the 747, they didn't build it for NASA or for the Air Force. They built it for airlines to move billions of people all around the Earth. It was designed to make air travel affordable, and it did. This is Starship. It can hold between 300 and 500 people in a passenger configuration, and it will be the 747 of future space lines. This big rocket was not designed by NASA or for NASA. It was designed for us. It's designed to take millions of people into space and to other planets. But before it takes hordes of people off world, Starship will build big space stations and fuel depots, and then communities of stations. We will need space docks and rotating spaceports off world to become a heliocentric civilization. Our next space construction machine, Sargon Systems Sphere Generator. Building a torus, or a straight tube, for modules is what the Sargon construction ring does. But how to quickly build end caps for those modules, STVs, or big spheres for habitation and propellant depots? The sphere generator is our second patent in a line of construction machines using panel construction at Offworld Industries Corporation. This machine is vital for building the big Virgo module, the STVs, or Valhalla station. It can also build a big sphere for propellant, habitation, or anything else that might require that shape. National Space Agencies built the International Space Station, and NASA wants to build another one just like it. If we want our chance to go, we need to build something much bigger. Most of the technology that will be used to build these big stations has been developed from NASA's numerous space programs. It is our hope that they will join us in our effort to create the first tourist type station. We think that if America does not expand and lower Earth orbit soon, then China will. Economists say that China is ascendant. America was too in the last century, so we know what that is like. Moonshots, great advances in computers, medicine, and aerospace. Now they say the West is in decline. But we can reverse that if we embrace expansion. And there is only one way to expand on this planet, up. Right now, we have an opportunity to extend our lead in space technology with SpaceX's Starship. Starship opens the door to a new era of American ascendance. We can lead the free world into our solar system with space construction tools and machines designed to build infrastructure off-world. We can't build galaxy-class starships like the Enterprise with transporters and warp drives. We just don't have the technology for it. But precision assembly of station components off-world is not only possible, but well within our capabilities. Big modules like Virgo and rotating stations like Vera Station are coming. And with a sphere generator, I believe that we can build big ships like Discovery with their spherical habitation areas within 10 to 15 years. At Bletchley, researchers at Pulsar Fusion are working on a fusion drive right now. Sending a ship to study the outer planets might be possible with advanced space construction technology and this new drive. It could all come together. With construction of large-scale habitation and transportation infrastructure on the horizon, our Earth-based civilization will begin transitioning to one that offers careers in space. Which career path would you choose? Engineering, construction, operations, or pilot? And what about the hotel jobs? Management, concierge, chef, room service, spa manager, maintenance? And there are so many more jobs in an off-world community. Fuel depot operations, waste processing, spacecraft MRO, space docks, orbital shipyards, off-world construction zones, they are all coming because Starship will get us there affordably. Our future off-world looks big and bright. We believe that if you want to work off-world, then your chance will come. If you want to help support our effort, join our crew at Gateway Spaceport here. Thank you, Ad Astra. By the way, Taking a spacecraft out of dock for the first time? Well, it may go something like this. Laredo, take us out. Excuse me? <laughs> they designed those controls after watching you pick her out. 
<clears throat> right, right. Okay, right. Right. Take her out. You gotta move to the right, move more to the right. Would you sit, sit your ass down? Sit, move. You wanna drive this thing? Move. 